Well, here's the last time. Love's Next Door, Chapter 10, Part 2. As soon as they were seated, a waiter approached and took their orders for wine, leaving, with the, leaving them with the menus and promising to return shortly. Everything sounds so delicious, Stacy said. I'm going to have a hard time making a choice. Together they discussed the various delectable selections and decided on the same appetizer and entree. The waiter silently arrived to deliver their wine, and then left as quickly as he had come, not wanting to interrupt the love, two lovers. In the meantime, Justin said, Have I told you how stunning you look tonight? The candlelight glistened in her hair and cast a soft glow over her face and brown hair. As she leaned towards him, his eyes slowly traveled down to her cleavage. <laughs> yes, I believe you have... She answered, blushing at his obvious admiration. Thank you. Justin raised his wine glass to my little neighbor in pigtails who blossomed into an exquisite, be exquisitely beautiful woman. Stacy touched her glass to his, and looking into each other's eyes, they looked, took their first sip of wine. And now it's my turn, she announced, raising, reaching to place her hand on his, to my handsome Sugar and Lance, whose tacky junk had brought him fame. A great toast, Justin said, laughing and tipping his glass to his lips. As if on cue, the waiter returned with their, to take their orders. Justin ordered escargot, Caesar salad, and grilled salmon for them both. As soon as the waiter left, Stacy couldn't resist and proceeded with a devilish grin. So now that you're a radio celebrity, what about television? She teased and took another sip of wine. I really have to thank you for organizing that radio interview. I know it was meant to be as a joke to embarrass me, but it really lifted me out of my doldrums. And by the way, the television station has called twice about producing a special documentary on my collection, Local Celebrity of World Collectibles. I haven't returned the station's calls because I was afraid that if they actually showed my collection on TV, the next call would be from the Funny Farm. I can't believe the attention my little radio nightmare has received. Justin paused, obviously still a little overwhelmed by his recent notoriety. And if I dare ask, how did you organize that radio rendezvous anyway? Stacy knew sooner or later he would ask that question, but she was ready. Well, Justin, I'm not quite sure if I could reveal my tactics. But tell you what, maybe we could trade information. You tell me how you stole my brassiere that night you ran it up the flagpole in high school. And I'll tell you how I masterminded your little radio ordeal. If you play your cards right, maybe the same ploy will get you on Jerry Springer. Justin couldn't help but laugh. For years, Stacy had wanted to know how he'd stolen her bra for the flagpole joke, and he had managed to hold out until this moment. Well, all right, I'll tell you about on one condition. Justin looked at Stacy. Her sparkling hazel eyes were glistening brighter than the candles that adorned the table. Stacy acknowledged his statement with a bow of her head. Justin looked deeply into her eyes, and in a serious voice, he said, You go first. Stacy grinned and dove right in. Okay, several weeks ago when Lizzie was over, she was telling me about the celebrity auction. Auction and joking that she and I should go. Well, then we heard that she and I should go. Well, then we heard the auction announcement advertisement on the radio. It was being sponsored by the station. We joked about the auction a little more, but basically let the subject drop. Then four days ago, Lizzie popped over for lunch and told me about you and Cheryl breaking up. For the life of me, I was going out of my mind with worry, because I knew you'd be feeling badly. So after I left, I called the, called the station and had them call you. Stacy folded her hands in front of her and waited for his response. Justin raised an eyebrow and said, Hold on, you're not getting off that easy. What did you say to the station people? When I asked, or when I called, I asked for the station manager, who put me in touch with a DJ handling the promotions for the auction. And then we had a little chat. He was hooked when I began describing your collection. God, you're lucky. I made the mistake of telling him the story about your pilgrimage to Detroit, to the old Tiger Stadium just before it was torn down, to, like, to collect one of the washroom urinals. The DJ went wild when he heard that. He was going to lead with the urinal story along with your African shrunken head, but I talked him out of it by telling him about your Dame Edna pantyhose. Thanks for being so considerate, Justin said dryly, grinning at her. All right, Sugar and Lance, now it's, Lance, now it's your turn. How did you steal my bra? My story is not as interesting as yours. Stacy could tell a stall tactic 
when she heard one and gave him a look that would stop a truck. Justin decided decided against further delay and came out with it. It was Lizzie. Lizzie? No way, Stacy said dumbfounded. Oh yes, it was actually Lizzie who suggested the joke. Justin was reveling in his old prank and loved the look on the, of total surprise on her face. If you remember, you'd recently played some ruthless prank on me, something to do with lace panties in my gym bag, she said, giving Stacy a knowing look. Then one afternoon at school, Lizzie approached me and suggested the flagpole prank, promising to snitch one of your bras. Stacy and Dustin both began laughing and realized it was Lizzie who was the silent master prankster. Justin took her hand. Could I have this dance? She nodded and stood up as Justin pulled her chair out. They walked to the dance floor hand in hand. When he... When she turned to him, Justin pulled her to his chest and wrapped his arms around her waist. This is nice, he murmured in her ear, as they began to slowly move around the dance floor. Stacy laid her head against his shoulder and closed her eyes, enjoying their closeness, one arm around his neck and the other against his chest. She could feel his heart beating strongly against her palm and smiling as he nuzzled her hair. Stacy breathed a sigh, her body alive with urgent feelings. So many emotions were running through her bubbling to the surface. I love you, she whispered softly against his chest. Justin stopped in mid-stride. Stacy raised her head and, met, and their eyes met. Never in his life had those words sounded so exquisite, so beautiful to his ears. He placed his hands on either side of her face, looking deeply into her eyes. Oh, Stacy, I love you more than I ever thought possible. I think I'd love you, I think I've loved you all these years, but I was too blind or stupid to know it. God, I'm happy, he said laughing out loud. Then he lifted her off her feet and spun her around the dance floor, hugging her against, <clears throat> hugging her until she laughed and begged him to put her down. Together they walked back to their table, laughing, smiling, and touching. The dinners arrived, and they were convinced it was the best meal they'd ever had. They were both swept into their own world of absolute perfection, captivated by one another and feeling totally complete in the discovery of a soulmate. During the drive home, they sat side by side in the car, their hands clasped tight between them, and the air around them charged with excitement. As they pulled into the driveway, the only light that was on was the one above the door, shining like a beacon in the night. Turning the motor off, Justin opened his door and walked around to help Stacy from the car. Stacy dug into her purse for her keys. Her fingers trembled slightly as she tried to push the key into the lock. Justin, Justin rescued her by gently taking the keys and unlocking the door. He pushed it open, then closed it softly behind them. Neither one knew who made the first move. Their coats were gone, and he unzipped her dress and watched as the silky fabric fell shivering to the floor, revealing her sheer black lace bra. Her heart skipped a beat as Justin slowly traced a path along the thin line of her silk underwear. One single finger slid under the band, teasing her. He slid, his, he slid it back and forth, making her squirm, making her want one thing and one thing only. He groaned when he felt the heat between against his finger. He pushed her panties. <laughs> Why is it ending like this? <sighs> he pushed her panties down over her deliciously tender bottom and moved his hand deeper and deeper into the softness below. An animal sound escaped from her throat, urging Justin on. She didn't think she could ever take any more. It was too too intense, too much. Her whole body throbbed with need. Now, please, she begged. He picked her up and carried her through the hall to her bedroom. There he placed her on the soft duvet that covered the bed and kissed her with the intense intensity that only true passion can inspire. He was so aroused that he could hear the blood pulsing through his body ringing in his ears. He sucked in a breath as she ran her fingers down his thigh. A seductive smile formed on, his, on her face in response to feeling the full extent of his arousal. Too much, too fast, he thought in a haze of desire. He quickly moved away from Stacy and stood up, leaving Stacy staring at him in eager anticipation. He took off his pants and shirt and once again joined her on the bed. He placed his hands on either side of her face, wrapping her fingers, his fingers through her hair. You're beautiful, he whispered, leaning his head down to kiss her with everything he had, every desire, every wish, every dream. Softly, he, she kissed his bare chest, her mouth like the touch of butterfly wings. His skin tingled wherever her luscious warm mouth touched. He felt helpless as he watched and felt her move from one spot to the next, branding him for life. Justin moved his hands across her shoulders to her arms, softly squeezing them in response. So damn good, he moaned as she moved across his body. Her shoulder-length brown hair 
weaving a sensuous trail behind her warm lips. The need to bury himself deep <laughs> within her was becoming too strong, like a burning hunger. He tucked her beneath him and moved his hands downward between the valley of her breast, down over her stomach. Heat radiated from her as he moved his body over hers. Now, Justin, she said in desperation. He watched as she closed her eyes, want waiting for him. Then he slipped deep within her as he wove a magic spell, moving together, wrapped up in a world of their own, bringing them closer and closer to a wondrous outburst of passion. The slow, gentle movement of her hips turned to wild, thrashing gyrations as she reached for, re for release. release. Stacy felt it that all-consuming sensation racking her body from head to toe as she arched her back in response. She cried his name in what seemed an unfamiliar voice as the dazzling colors of delirious rainbow exploded in her head. Justin felt it too, like a glove squeezing the very life from his being. Every sensation that was gripping her was gripping him, and he was pulled into her, her wondrous spell. With a final growl bursting from his lungs, he collapsed on top of her, nuzzling her neck with his kiss with his lips. He rolled over, bringing her with him, tucking her into the crook of his arm. With a satisfaction, satisfact, satisfied sigh, Stacy closed her eyes. The last thing she remembered was kissing Justin, was Justin kissing her lightly on the forehead. Two hours later, Justin woke up, smiling as he rolled over and watched her sleep. Who would have thought, he murmured, deliciously tracing the bones of her cheek. Then gently touching her lips, she sighed softly. Stacy had been awake for a few minutes, enjoying the moment. It felt right to have Justin in her bed. She could get used to this, she thought, as she rolled over and kissed him. I thought you were asleep, he whispered. Guess you were wrong. Come here. She pulled him down until he covered her body like a warm blanket. Justin smiled. You're wanton, he growled in her ear. I like that in a woman, he said with one quick motion. He joined their bodies again and carried her over the horizon for yet another ride on the wild side. I had to. The next morning, Stacy awoke to find Justin leaning against the window frame. He was holding the curtain aside and studying the morning sun as it rose in the sky. Beautiful pastels swirled over the clouds that hung on the, from the heavens. The soft sounds of the lone songbird drifted by, sta by and Stacy suddenly realized the spring was just around the corner. She moved the blankets aside and grabbed the sheet from the bed. Wrapping it around her body, quietly, without disturbing him, she paddled next to him. She paddled, padded next to him. You're up early, she whispered. Justin turned slowly towards her and held out arms to enfold her. She stepped within them and snuggled close to his warm body, wrapping an arm around his waist and gently placing a kiss on his bare chest. I didn't want to disturb you, he answered softly. Look at that. He moved the curtain further aside so she could see what he found so fascinating. The contrast was spectacular, the white snow against the brilliant colors of the morning. To add to scenery, the buds of the maple trees had begun their magic, signaling the oncoming change in season. Beautiful, she said, resting her head against him. What's that, she said, as Justin placed his hand over the intriguingly little pump. She looked down at, he looked down at her and smiled rather sheepishly. I had it in my pocket last night and I was going to give it to you at dinner, but I was afraid you'd laugh, he said. It's a bit corny. What is it? Let me see, she said, prying, trying to pry his fingers open. Justin laughed and raised his hand above his head. It's just an old birthday present. What do you mean an old birthday present? She laughed, standing on her tiptoes, trying to reach his hands. You're not going to believe this, but it's a dopey thing I bought for you when we were in high school, but we broke up. But then we broke up, so I never gave it to you. You mean you've had it all these years? Give it to me, she said, digging a knuckle into his ribcage. Promise you won't laugh, he asked, his, slate, his face slightly flushed. I'm telling you, it's really corny, but I was trying to be romantic. And what did I know at sixteen? Maybe it belongs in my room of tackiness. No more excuses, Stacy ordered. Hand it to me. Hand it over. She held out her hand, and Justin placed a little balled-up wad of tissue paper in her palm. Slowly, she pulled the crinkled paper apart to reveal a small ring of gold with two hearts entwined. St Stacy felt tears in her eyes. It's not corny at all. It's a lovely ring, she, she said, her throat suddenly feeling tight. You haven't read the inscription yet, Justin said. You better reserve judgment. 
Stacy turned the ring around and saw the words of love that only a teenage boy could have composed. The inscription read, Love's Next Door. Tears of happiness welled in her eye. I love you, she whispered, softly against his cheek as a tear trickled down her cheek, falling between them. Justin placed a finger under her chin and raised her face until their eyes met. There was a ghost of smile on his face. He used the pad of his thumb to wipe away the solitary drop that was about to fall. Stacy, you're really touched, aren't you? I thought you'd laugh. I can remember when I bought it. I was wishing I could forge something better. You thought I'd laugh, she said. I'm going to wear it for the rest of my life. Look, if it's my pinky finger perfectly. She, she held out her hand for him to admire the little ring he, she considered a treasure, the inscription sweet and tender, and, very, and so very, very true. Justin gently took her hand and brought it to his lips, kissing her fingertips. You never cease to amaze me, he said, wrapping his arms around her and pulling her close. Smiling, Stacy glanced at the bed and murmured, I'd like to give you <laughs> I'd like to give you a special Colby Curlew Curlew thank you for it. she never finished the words. Justin gathered her up in his strong arms and laid her on the bed, their bed. She reached up and wrapped her arms around his neck, bringing him down for a kiss that left them both breathless. Their lovemaking took a new meaning as they joined bodies, heart, body, and soul, knowing they shared a love that could carry them through the rest of their lives, proving that love can flourish where you least expect it, even next door. That is the end of Love's Next Door. Bye.